warm good evening to one and all on behalf of alambi pharmaceutical limited i welcome today's eminent speaker dr k shamala madam and all the participant who is participating in this webinar from india and abroad i also privileged to welcome dr ashok kumar walpadasu he is a admin and founder of the satya zero grazing whatsapp group and webinar series clip webinar series also i welcome uh, chief advisor of uh, clip webinar and satya zero grazing webinar this clip webinar series dr shivraman sir also uh, just a benefit of our all the participant i just wanted to inform you that under uh, leadership of mr p krona nidhi who is senior vice president alambi pharmaceutical limited his continuous guidance motivation help alambi to bring this e cv this is initiative e learning platform for field veterinarian ma'am and all the participant who always believe that learning is the continuous process and veterinary college is the knowledge center we feel proud to that which that we become bridge between the professional and field veterinarian under this we started our e ecv the e learning platform for field veterinarian on 13th of may 2020 we got two series in uh, 2020 we had we conducted 16 webinar with different topic related to field veterinarian in this series we already completed four webinar this is our fifth webinar in uh, alambic cv webinar series 2021 apart from that we also become knowledge partner for a uh, renowned university like tanuas razuas mapsu kevas uh, kerala agriculture and fishery science university and dovasu mathura we also become knowledge partner with renowned veterinary uh, societies like vipm and satya zero grazing these are the glimpses of some of the webinar we conducted during this uh, covid pandemic with tanuas we conducted two global webinar series in first webinar series we conducted 18 global webinar in a webinar series a global webinar series two we conducted till now four webinar and it is going on whereas we conducted one international e symposium on renal uh, critical care management for pets and with the help uh, with the pgis akola that is present in maharashtra in the mapsu we conducted 28 international national and international webinar and one clinical case conference with parvani veterinary college it is a part of this mapsu university we conducted one exclusively lady veterinarian conference national conference and one statistical tool program for one week statistical tool program for all the researchers with kerala agriculture and fishery science university we conducted lumpy skin disease awareness program in the, in malayalam language for the all the veterinarians as well as the farmers with the dovasu masura mathura we conducted basic of electro electrocardiography in dog a five day training course for veterinarians with pgi uh, pgiwr that is rajuwasu we conducted one national and two international webinar with satya zero grazing we had conducted till now nine webinar exclusively for cpen group now and apart from that recently our senior vice president alambi pharmaceutical limited with the director of clinic tanuas we uh, developed one first hand information manual that is know your clinic for the clinical students in collaboration with tanuas now i will invite mr p karuna nidhi sir to introduce our today's eminent speaker thank you sir thank you dr santosh and i also take pleasure in welcoming dr ashok kumar sir and also dr shivraman from tanuvas and uh, regarding dr shyamala karnagaran i am very happy to introduce today's speaker she is an assistant professor department of parasitology college of veterinary and animal science mannuthi kerala dr shyamala karnagaran did her bvsc in h and msc and phd in the year of 1995 bbsc 1997 msc and 2020 phd in philosophy doctor of philosophy so from kerala veterinary and animal science university dr shyamala is the first lady veterinarian as an expert who is going to speak in alambic national webinar this is the first time so congratulations to her and uh, in her footpath i expect many more lady veterinarian will come forward and conduct such programs as far as professional journey is concerned she has started as career as a veterinary surgeon in department of animal husbandry government of kerala and she served there 12 years i think after spending 12 years she is coming back to college means definitely her interest level is very high for uh, teaching and academic activities 
so therefore uh, she joined as a assistant professor in uh, k vasu in department of parasitology she has completed 11 years in this service as an assistant professor so other highlights about her is that she is a very good extension worker she has developed an eye anemia card for goats in kerala region so that the farmer can detect anemia in their goats without any external intervention they themselves can study so if needed they can approach the veterinarian for uh, correction for the improvement we are very fortunate to have dr shyamala Kar karnagaran to share her knowledge and experience with us in the subject of helminthiosis the management of helminthiosis with a limited chemotherapy thank you very much doctor over to dr shyamala Kar karnagaran for her excellent speech thank you Good evening, one and all. Uh, thank you for your good words, uh, Sri Karunamthi. Uh, myself, K. Shyamala, Assistant Professor from the Department of Veterinary Parasitology, College of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Manmuthi, Kerala. My topic for presentation is Towards Sustainable Management of Helminthosis with the Limited Chemotherapy. 2.1 billion heads of sheep and goat are the primary livestock resource throughout the world. I mean, gastrointestinal parasitism, uh, mostly the gastrointestinal nematodosis is the highest global indexed animal health constraint and, uh, and major humid tropical stressor. Uh, Anthelmanthics are the simple, effective, quick, safe method for the control of uh, parasitic infections. But due to the indiscriminate use of the anthelminthics, actually these anthelminthics are the victims of their own success. Coming to the economic impact of GE parasitism, goat and sheep, you know, they contribute to around 16% and 7% respectively of the meat uh, production of our uh, country and uh, reduced weight gain is the most important complication of the gastrointestinal parasitism. Uh, strictly speaking, for every unit of this uh, egg per gram, there was a, a reduction in 0 0.008 grams of weight. For every unit of fecal account, there is reduction in 0 0.008 grams of weight. So as per the day in Senyal 2009, uh, the in, uh, among the goats in uh, India, the reduction in the body weight uh, that lead to the reduction in meat production by 15.56% uh, mortality by 16.57% premature culling 11.25% reduced fertility. All these can be uh, correlated to the uh, reduction in the body weight, anemia, which are the complications of the GI parasitism. When we are thinking of the baseline information of uh, the gastrointestinal parasitism in an area, the basic thing to be uh, to study is the epidemiology. Epidemiology of the particular uh, infection in the state should be uh, studied in detail and a um, comprehensive survey among the uh, awareness of uh, parasite control practices among the board farmers as well as the um, veterinary surgeons are invented. When we conducted a comprehensive survey on the awareness and the practices among the board farmers in the 13 agroecological zones of Kerala uh, in the last few years, it was observed that there is no uniformity in the uh, GE parasitism. There, 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 there is no uniformity. There is monthly 14% are uh, deworming. Uh, 
by monthly revolving by 8 percentage quarterly 27 seasonally 33 and in a tribal area none of them were uh, devolved at this actually this uh, indiscriminate or the over usage of the anthropic is not justifiable in a uh, state like kerala uh, where the climate uh, the effect of the climate can very well utilized for the um, sustainable management with limited chemotherapy actually what we have to do is we have to empower the farmers to use the right type of product in the right time in the right kind of animal when uh, the, actually and uh, there, there is no uniformity in the uh, anthelmetic treatment then we uh, go into uh, where from where they are getting the guidance uh, for the anthelmetic treatment guidance from where they, then it was observed that majority around 42 percentage are depending on the local chemist and uh, only 29 percentage are depending on the veterinary hospitals or veterinary uh, surgeons for the advice regarding the anthelmetic and uh, 15 percent uh, from the fellow farmers that is very uh, um, very crucial actually uh, we have to uh, consider uh, the when we consider uh, the anthelmetic treatment practices we have to um, think of the anthelmetic resistance and this anthelmetic uh, res- uh, for the sustainable management of this anti helminthic resistance strategies and uh, um, to avoid the wastage we have to limit this anthelmetic to the prescription and veterinary surgeons should be the uh, center point of the an- management of anti animal parasites instead of that the chemist you know, when they when they are deep, uh, depending on the chemist majority are using under dosing and frequent treatment which all lead to the anti helminthic resistance that's a very a major problem we have to uh, make it is uh, at this, at this point i want to tell you that in, uh, in the coming 15 to 20 years there is well, uh, there is no chance for a new um, A, a group coming into the uh, in this deworming field and so we have to cons- uh, we have to conserve the anthelmetic for the future generations so this this type of um, guidance is no uh, totally unwelcome then we studied the uh, uh, conducted a questionnaire survey among the veterinary practitioners then we understood that the benzimdazole is the um, treatment of choice current dose of ethanbenzol is given for the goats by the 71 percentage the dose also the goats in case of goats we have to be very careful that the goat meat 1.5 to 2 times the dose of the cattle or the sheep because of the high metabolic rate otherwise it is becoming under dose and uh, strongylosis is a major mortal uh, reason for mortality among the goats and uh, they are all aware of this anthelmetic resistance still the blanket treatment is a proper thing there also we have to interfere and the current uh, and uh, another important protocol which uh, should be practiced in majority of the um, uh, this small ruminant producing countries is the rotation of anthelmetic which is um, we are least bothered about the rotation of the anthelmetic as well as the quarantine treatment so a continuous veterinary education of uh, veterinary education with a special reference to parasitology is inevitable to have an awareness uh, among the newly budding veterinarians about the current trends in the management uh, of parasitic infections this is the picture of the frequency distribution of fec uh, this is a um, outcome of a um, uh, examination of uh, around 2000 fecal sample uh, uh, examined for a period of one year and uh, it was observed that there is a there is no uh, there is an ex- 
extremely um, dispersion is there. There's an extreme uh, uh, dispersion is there. That is uh, the, the green color indicate less than 500 uh, egg per gram in 77 percentage. The yellow color that is 13 percentage indicate 500 to 1000 and 5 percentage of 1000 to 1500 and above. This indicate that even if we are planning to be only uh, below 500, actually what we are doing is a drug abuse. There is an over usage of the anthelmintics. We are uh, pouring into these animals unnecessarily. Actually, it's a wastage for the government and as well as to the individual farmer. There was an over dispersion of parasitism among the animals. That is 20 percentage, in a, if, suppose there are 100 animals in a farm. This only 20 percentage of the animals are responsible for this 80 percentage of the parasitism. 20 percentage is responsible for 80 percentage of the parasitism. So what we have to do is to identify this 20 percentage, uh, either treat them or cut them. So, so uh, with that, we will be able to reduce the base stage of the anthelmintic welfare issue is there, traceability issue is there, and monetary, monetary issues are also there. So uh, this 2080 principle, 20 percentage of the animals are responsible for the 80 percentage of the parasitism. Another is the weather. I think uh, all of you know that Kerala is famous for uh, our rains. We have um, two floods in the last two years. Well, actually, there are two rainy seasons up there. In, uh, our climate, in our weather is uh, two rainy season. One just before, uh, one is Idava Padi, and uh, the next one is Tulavasha. Uh, that is by the end of May. And, uh, by end of May, the rainy season start, and the other one by October. So the, this uh, picture is in, indicate it's a relationship between the uh, rainfall and the fecal account. The rainfall and the fecal account. Uh, it's a year round study from uh, January to uh, December. It indicate that the fecal account start increasing by the middle of May, then slowly increasing, increasing, and uh, then it is coming down. Again, it is increasing. So uh, this uh, by the middle of uh, and um, middle of May our uh, rainy season starts. Then uh, the fecal account increases. This increase is uh, from the hypobiotic larvae. Uh, this larvae become the uh, the infective and uh, they will be producing eggs. And from there only we need to treat. The when there is rain, the salinity of the soil increases and that uh, causes egg dyes. And also during the rainy season, large amount of bacteria, you know, that the, uh, when there are five larval stages in the uh, life cycle of strong gill parasite. And then first and second larvae, they are leading on the bacteria. So the you know, bacteria population is there in the uh, fecal, uh, in the uh, soil. And so they can survey very well. And uh, the moisture and warmth are inevitable for the life cycle. And, if, and during the favorable weather, within three days, uh, otherwise it is around six to nine days, it uh, required for, uh, for the development of the infective larvae. And uh, during the favorable climate, you know, if it's a good rain and uh, temperature is favorable, then uh, within three days, they develop to the infective third stage larvae. And uh, the rain is also important to release the fecal, uh, the larvae from the uh, fecal pellet. From the picture, it is clear that uh, February, March, April, there is very less number of parasitism. Then by the end, uh, by the end of May, it is increasing. June, July. So by the mid of uh, July, we can give the uh, first dose of antibody. Then uh, it is again uh, start increases uh, by October. 
Then at that, uh, July, uh, th this was uh, taken during the 2018. Uh, so uh, there was a period of flood in Kerala. So um, if it is necessary, we can give another treatment by October. Otherwise, there is no need of any other uh, treatment. So one uh, is enough. Otherwise, if it is essential, we can give another treatment also. Uh, there is no need of any anomaly treatment during the summer months. Very, very less amount of, there is no need, uh, no need of including uh, this anomalies in the drugs uh, for the summer management of uh, animals. So we have to be very careful that uh, other, uh, all other, uh, very month, every month, monthly treatment is also practiced in many regions. All these are there is no need of any alternative treatment uh, during the during such month. We can uh, very well uh, uh, coordinate this um, rain with the fecal account and then treat one and a half months after the start of the rain. Then an effective worm control strategy. It should coincide the advices and the high larval burden in the pasture. It should coincide. Only if it is there in the pasture, they will be getting the infection. So it should coincide with the advices and the high larval burden in the pasture. And also, it should ensure a good nutrition also. And a monitor, we have to monitor uh, the burden of FEC and assess the antimalic resistance in intervals. Monitor the worm burden through a PC and assess AR, AR status uh, occasionally for the uh, whether uh, we are able to maintain the treatment properly. Just know about our treatment strategies. We have to do. So, um, this is very important that we have the antelmetic treatment should coincide with the diseases as well as the high larval burden in the past. Then another event is the effect of physiological stain on the FEC. Um, you know, uh, we, uh, I think from the BVSC classes, the term is familiar to you. That's the periparturian rise. Actually, this periparturian rise uh, is associated. Uh, there will be a highly contamination of the environment when the susceptible population is increasing. Uh, uh, as far as uh, in Kerala condition, uh, when we uh, studied whether the uh, effect of physiological state, whether there is any effect of the physiological stage on the FEC, it was noticed that there was, uh, it is clear that there is a highly significant effect of the uh, periparturian period on the fecal account. So we will come to that, the periparturian rise. It is predominant in young animals. There's a young animals where the immunity is less and uh, those animals which are having more number of kids and the lace gestation, high prolactin will be there. And they, uh, due to the effect of prolactin and the progesterone, then the immune uh, system will be suppressed. And uh, there will be increased fecundity of the adult female worms will be there. And uh, this vary with the species of the animals. In Kerala, we have noticed that uh, we have this periparturian uh, rising account uh, in our goal, except during the summer months. So we have to deworm these animals uh, two weeks prior to their kidding, so that the, uh, the account will be the less number of eggs will be there in the fecal material and uh, um, and for the kids, there will be less chance for getting the infection from the uh, surrounding. And also, we have to improve uh, the um, proteinaceous uh, food materials also to uh, reduce the periparturian rising echo. In Kerala condition, there is no need of any uh, antelmetic treatment for these pregnant animals during the summer months. During the summer months, there was no uh, fecal account increase notice, but uh, in other cases, there were, it was noticed. So during the summer months, we can avoid this. And then in Kerala, it's a humid tropical climate. 
This is the generic composition of the strong healer way. We have uh, learned uh, that uh, there are many uh, type of strong gills are there in the, in the fecal material. There's humongous, trichostrong gills, bunostomum, strong gill oldus, esophagostomum. You may be remembering about the uh, tail end and the head end. And uh, those things uh, actually, um, it's only in the diagnostic purpose only in the learning process. But the yellow color indicate the most predominant species is the uh, Hemuncus condotus. It is the most predominant species of strongly larvae. This is the outcome of a year round study. And then uh, it is the most predominant, at least 53, more than 53 percentage is. Uh, Hemuncus condotus throughout the year, and uh, immediately after the uh, two rainy season, there will be bunostrum also. It's a hookworm, bunostrum also. That's also sunotic. This bunostrum is a sunotic. Then uh, trichostrongalus. This hemuncus is a voracious blood sucker. So uh, the anemia in goats is a, uh, the gastrointestinal parasitism with the humongous condotus is a major reason for anemia goes. And uh, the violet color indicates the trichostrongalus, which is a, uh, is, it is a, a black scorvo that's responsible for the <coughs> diarrhea. And the uh, esophagostrum that is causing um, you know, the pimply gut or naughty gut that's uh, causing reduction in the body weight. And the green color indicate the light green color indicates the bunostomum immediately after the two rainy seasons. It's also a blood sucker. So all these, uh, the, this indicate that anemia is a major a reason for hemoptosis. Uh, hem anemia is a major reason, uh, major clinical symptom associated with the gastrointestinal parasitism as hemuncus condotus is the most predominant species of parasite in goats of Kerala. So why hemuncus condotus is difficult to control? At times uh, we feel uh, offended uh, that we are not able to manage the parasitism, especially in case of goats and sheep. Because, of, because the nature is like that, because it's a direct life cycle and it is highly pathogenic. It is taking 0.05 ml blood per uh, day and the prolific egg producer around 10,000 eggs it is producing daily and is able to undergo hypobiosis during unfavorable climate, during the very cold climate in Rajasthan and um, Delhi and also during the very hot climate in Kerala and in the summer months they undergo hypobiosis and they can very well, they how uh, the theory uh, the theory behind this hypobiosis is um, we are not at uh, unraveled in the, the theory behind the hypobiosis because how they are able to identify the change in the climate outside and uh, they undergo uh, hibernation and whenever they immediately after their first rainfall they start um, developing and uh, pro uh, coming out so uh, they can survive in the pasture for a very long period adaptable to varying environmental uh, climatic conditions. All this make the humongous controllers very difficult to control. Then among the agroecological soil, uh, this is a, a work conducted in um, the 13 agroecological zones of Kerala. Still, the, there is effect of agroecological zones on the FEC. So we have to, uh, while developing a new treatment strategy for a state, we have to think of the agroecological songs for uh, this decision making. And there are many factors that affecting parasitism. Here, one is stocking rate, increased stocking rate. How much um, effort the farmer is making, the increased stock uh, is there, there is increased chance of parasitic infection among them. Then soil type. Soil type is very significant. Then uh, sandy soil, it's famous for this uh, hemocus and, and gallostromo infection. The ratio of adult and the kid, ratio of the adult and kid, high uh, and, and number of uh, um, 
the adult animals will have more fecal material there are more uh, egg will be there and uh, that that contamination um, of the pasture will be affecting the kids so retention of young stock for more time then grazing practices early morning and late evening grazing we have uh, learned in our um, parasitology classes that uh, this organism this uh, l3 stage the monicea in the life cycle of monicea the uh, grass mites they are for positively phototropic and negatively geotropic that is in the initial uh, when there is slight amount of sunlight is there they are positively phototropic they will be moving towards the light then era against the earth so they are moving up for some time when there, there is enough sunlight is there they will come down so uh, in the grazing management the basic principle is that during this early morning and late evening we should not leave these animals for grazing because they will be getting the infection even if you are giving so many uh, supplements or <clears throat> and then when they are still getting the infection so it's a bit difficult to control so grazing practices the frequency and timing of deworming is also important then anthelmintic use elevation of the land the highly elevated land there will be an increased chance of parasitic infection so the stocking rate soil type the ratio of the adult and the kid the retention of young stock for more time grazing practices frequency and timing that we uh, discuss later frequency what is the importance of frequency and timing of deworming then anthelmintic uh, used elevation of the land these are the factors that affect the ga parasitism in a agro ecological so and what are the reason for the we have seen that there is a uh, high drenching frequency among the um, in case especially in case of both the high drenching frequency there is a basic thing is lack of epidemiological knowledge actually uh, we are unaware of the term uh, refugia have you heard of that refugia it's a group of parasites not exposed to any anthelmintic and we will discuss about it in the uh, when discussing about the um, lack of epidemiology that, that we have already seen that a uh, picture the relationship between the uh, rainy season and the uh, rainy season month and fec so that is epidemiology epidemiology of a particular locality in which uh, upon a population how it is affecting what is the uh, at what time we have to deworm the animal what are the climate at which there is no fecal account in the pasture there is no fecal account uh, in, uh, there is no uh, larvae in the pasture there is no uh, worms in the body of the host at that time there is no need of any and then then a strong lesson between the small dominant partners and the chemist that's also very important because uh, and the good turn out of anthelmintic the pennies when used uh, initially there is importance of uh, this <clears throat> parasitic infection if you are giving correct dose of treatment initially uh, that will act immediately that is the effect of anthelmintic they will act immediately and the result is also very much uh, remarkable so the farmers will be very much surprised to see even if a, it's a kitten if you give the anthelmintic the, the, the one dose of uh, anemosip or pyrandel palm oil two weeks after within two weeks uh, the immediately the uh, all the developing stages of the um, toxocara will be over and the kitten will go like uh, just like a dog so the farmers will be very much uh, and actually this indiscriminate for the indiscriminate deworming to some extent our extension is a culprit we have, i think we have taught the farmers uh, to deworm them routine deworming practices or the um, deworming schedule we used to deworm all the animals and later on we understood that uh, it's a failure but uh, they have taken it up the farmers have taken it up the effect of deworming so whenever there is any clinical symptom uh, whenever the animal is not coming into heat when it is anorectic when it is slight distension uh, the anorexia uh, some respiratory infection anything and everything they will be given the anthelmintics and also whenever they are getting any um, 
any kit from the uh, any pro project, there will be dewormer there. They will be giving the dewormer. This dewormers are not supposed to give along with all these things. There is specific time uh, for all this deworming. And higher the flock size, more grain size. That is also because the farmer will be very much tense uh, that if there is any outbreak of disease, uh, it will be very difficult for me. So they will be all, they are almost keen of uh, obs keenly observing the animals and uh, immediately uh, seeing after seeing any any clinical symptom of any disease, they will be giving that deworming. So all this uh, leads to the high drenching frequency. Lack of epidemiological knowledge, strong lesion between the small dominant farmer and the chemist, and good turnout of the anthelmintics. That's the effect of the anthelmintics. Anthelmintics is a golden uh, drug. So we have to conserve the effect for, of this uh, anthelmintics for the future generation by uh, correct time, specific correct dose, correct time, and correct animal, uh, and animals which are in need of any treatment. Then management practices that can reduce the need for digging. Uh, these things we can advise the farmers early marketing without getting the infection, early digging, so that we can uh, manage the nutrition of the animal and the less chance of getting the infection from the uh, adult animals. The night pinning and good sanitation Zero grazing, even, even if it is an aggressive methodology, zero grazing and uh, uh, the you know, grass after uh, keeping it in the, under the direct sunlight for a few hours and give, uh, th that will reduce the parasitic infection. Delay in grazing until the new dew lift. I have shown you the picture where the dew uh, with the uh, dew with the um, parasite. So in the early morning and late evening, um, this larvae will come up to the uh, come up the grass blades uh, and they will be there in the dew. And uh, in in the early morning and late evening uh, grazing, they will be getting the infection and put the treated animals in dry load for 48 hours after deworming. Because in these 48 hours, they will be excreting large number of the ova uh, that, that is going to contaminate our pasture as well as the shed. So uh, these are the management practices. Actually, uh, this parasitic infection, uh, it is a nutritional and, paras uh, nutritional and management disease. By managing the nutrition, by managing the uh, the premises, we can control it to some extent. So these things we can advise to the farmers, early marketing, early weaning, night penning and good sanitation, zero grazing, uh, delay in grazing until you left in the grazing. If you are not uh, following grazing, it, it will be very difficult for the poor farmers. But, but that is also an aggressive attitude. Uh, if you have enough money uh, and if they can avoid grazing, and uh, um, give the, um, the grass or the um, uh, leaves of these uh, trees like jackfruit. It's a, a very easy. Uh, the delay in grazing until uh, after the dew left, and they put the treated animals in dry load for 48 hours after people. Now we will come to the anti health. That there are uh, two uh, major classification that is broad spectrum and narrow spectrum. Uh, in under the broad spectrum, that is a benzimidazole and co benzimidazole. It's a very effective for the nematodes. And in heavy doses, they may be effective to some extent for the trematodes and cystodes, but uh, there are enough drugs for the others. So there is no need of uh, giving this to. Then imidazole, it's also effective against the nematode. Then tetrahydropyrimidic, effective against the nematode. Avermectin is effective for uh, this thing, nematodes. It is not effective for the trematode and cestodes. Salicylanilide is effective for the trematodes. Then piperacin to some ex uh, stages of the nematode. Then others, that's the prasiquandel, it is effective for the um, nematodes as well as the cystodes. Then antiparasitic, this benzimidazole, it's a wonder drug. Uh, they are having a very low toxicity, around uh, more than 10 times the recommended dose. It's not toxic, but uh, you are not supposed to give 10 times the dose. Uh, at times, uh, we have to give uh, twice the dose. 
10 times the dose is not toxic in some uh, to control many of the developing stages in the body then we can give heavy doses of benzimidazole then levomisole it is safe for pregnant animals and but it is not obesidal it's not obesidal then morandel tartrate is effective against the adult genito but not against the hypothyroidic larva morandel tartrate pyrandel palm oil is effective for the adult and the larval stages of the nematode and ascaris that's why we are giving uh, this pyrandel for the puppies then uh, calves kitten in their in the initial phases uh, this is uh, active against the ascaris it is safe in pregnant animals and young ones the pyrandel palm oil then macrocytic uh, lactones and then ivermectin are active against the adult and the larval cystos uh, the larval nematode larval that's why it's given for um, then no action against tapeworm or fruits that you have to be very careful ivermectin it's a lipophilic uh, macrocytic lactones are highly lipophilic actually it is not recommended for the milky animals because it's uh, <clears throat> and only uh, one uh, that is uh, the no withdrawal uh, milk withdrawal period is epirenomectin mm -hmm. then salicylanilides they act against the uh, flukes nucleosamide it is effective against the tapeworms and immature amphistoms mm -hmm. uh, then prasiquandel is effective for the adult and the larval stages of the tapeworms all these things uh, we have to be in mind uh, while uh, giving treatment then coming to the dose rate dose in case of goats they need uh, 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 only that there will be 1.5 to 2 times the dose of sheep and cat except in case of levomisole 1.5 in case of levomisole 1.5 the dose of uh, a cow no sheep we have to give so um, that is also very important goat dose for goat sheep dose for sheep cattle dose for cattle Um, I I I heard that many are uh, telling that uh, what is in parasitology we have we can, any animal man they can be given to any the dose rates uh, it will be there but that is not the case um, even if it is um, mite this um, sarcoptics sauroptics everything is uh, uh, different. This affecting the uh, superficial layer. One is uh, going deep inside. So oxyphenazole, oxyphenazole, ten milligram per kilogram body weight. Ivermectin, zero point four milligram per kilogram. Doramectin, epirenomectin, oxyrectin, levamisole, morantel, pyrantel. All these are the drugs we can use uh, in case of goats uh, in this uh, dose weight. <coughs> Then oxyclozine, fifteen milligram per kilogram body weight. Rafoxanate, seven point five. Niclosamide, triclabendazole. That's a double choice for immature fish oils. Then fenbendazole, is ten milligram per kilogram body weight. Albendazole, twenty milligram per kilogram body weight. These are those as per Kaplan, two thousand eight. Then in case of albendazole, we can give ten uh, milligram per kilogram body weight two oh, oh, times a day and become the twenty milligram per. Kilogram weight. So all this um, dose um, should be in your fingertip. Now we will come to the anti-helminthic resistance. Anti-helminthic resistance. It's the ability of the worm to survey. Uh, the anti-helminthic resistance is the ability of the worm to survey the treatment that is generally effective at the recommended levels. Um, there are actually there are two types of parasites are there: uh, susceptible parasite and uh, resistant parasite. That is there in the um, nature both um, susceptible and it's a default. Well, both resistant. It's a uh, it's a mechanism of survival, a multi-dimensional adaptive phenomenon. It is an inevitable consequence of the uh, chemical control of parasites. It's a dam. So oh, the ability of the bone to survey the treatment that are generally effective at the recommended at the recommended dose. Uh, if the fenbendazole ten milligram per kilogram body weight, if you are giving, if it is uh, effective, oh, all the parasite will be dead. So if it is not effective, or uh, if the 
there are two types i told you the uh, susceptible parasite and resistant parasite both are there in the soil and the body of the host but and it is heritable phenomenon and uh, and then there is this heritable phenomenon and they help the survival of the parasite and it is a reversible process also when we are uh, treating the animal so frequently within the pre patent period pre patent period is when they are um, producing egg that egg become uh, larvae the larva become adult and then they may adult may and produce larvae this is uh, a produce egg this interval is a pre patent period if we are deworming the animal within the pre patent uh, period of the within the pre patent period of the worm we will be killing all the susceptible parasite and the resistant parasite only will be survive so uh, if we are uh, frequency of uh, that is why the frequency of treatment is very important if we are frequently deworming some uh, in many regions they are uh, deworming the animal monthly so if you are deworming the animal within the pre patient period all the susceptible parasite both in the body of the host as well as in the uh, soil will be dying so what that is remaining is a resistant parasite so that that is causing uh, major problem it's an uh, actually it's an reversible uh, phenomenon reversible phenomenon especially uh, in a um, in a farm condition if it is all the animals are harboring this um, parasite that are resistant then it will take 25 years to revert back to the normal if you are applying the targeted selective treatment in a uh, in a small holder condition if you are carefully applying the uh, targeted selective treatment it will take 6 years for the completely uh, back so you know, actually it's a irreversible phenomenon and the percentage of uh, resistant parasite in the in area is about 25% it will be very difficult to come back to the normal condition and some uh, pandelmic resistance and varies with the geo geographical region in kerala climate we have uh, two rainy seasons are there and also uh, many many small small uh, uh, rainy shocks will be there so uh, associated with each rain some amount of parasite will be developed so uh, i told you that there's a group of parasite not uh, this um, exposed to any anthelmintic so such parasite uh, are the uh, resource pool they will be supplying the gene for susceptibility so we uh, we need the presence of this refugia population in the soil for a refugia population to maintain we have to leave some um, animal untreated so some animal should be left untreated uh, to maintain the refugia population in the soil as well as in the body of the host and anthelmintic resistance depend on the past deworming practices if uh, in, a, in a farm the particular uh, uh, administration was very keen in eradicating all the parasites they will be continuously deworming the animal every month they will be that that's a past deworming practices the intensity of uh, the resistant population in the pasture as well as in the body of the horse will be very high so even if the particular uh, doctor is very much aware of the importance of anti helminthic resistance still the uh, past deworming practices is going to affect this very bad we cannot actually we cannot prevent the anthelmintic resistance it will it is an inevitable consequence of the chemical management of parasites but we can reduce the rate of development we can reduce the rate of development see the picture this green area is a resistant is undetected there is no resistance in that population slowly the uh, we are deworming them frequently and the dosing the heterozygous population is increasing then th this portion at this phase uh, we are unaware of the um, reduced performance we are unaware suddenly the uh, percentage of the um, resistant become obvious and the poor performance will be remarkable 
this phase and it will be very difficult to revert back to this phase. So if we are uh, in this phase, we have to be very careful and uh, always try to come back to this phase. Don't come to this phase. So for that, what all things we can do in this phase. When deworming is found ineffective in your form, what we have to do? Those with the another class of antihelminthic, that is, if the uh, antihelminthic resistance is against the benzimidazole, the antihelminthic resistance is towards the mode of action. One thing, antihelminthic resistance is developing in the parasite, not in the body of the host. Uh, in the uh, and that too, if it is uh, resistant to um, albendazole, it will be resistant to fenbendazole also. So we have to think of another mode of action. So like the libamisole or uh, ivermectin. So we have to switch over to another anthelminthic. Or we can use two anthelminthic together. That's also effective. Even if it is resistant to benzimidazole, if we are using benzimidazole together with the libamisole, attempts to be effective. So you can think of all that. We can support that. Uh, we can uh, support a treatment with the vitamin B complex, iron, probiotics, protein supplements. These all will help to Im uh, improve the immune status of the resistant status of the host. So we can support it with the B complex, iron, probiotics, uh, protein supplements and identify and remove the source of infection. That is very important. <coughs> I told you that the 20... <laughs> <coughs> AG principle. And uh, in that case, remove, uh, uh, identify and remove the source of infection. That is also very important. The, the, uh, this 20% is some animals which are um, highly susceptible to parasitism. They will be continuously excreting the parasites. You, you might have seen um, animals highly um, susceptible to mastate disinfection. It's like that. There are some animals are there. They are always, they will be having um, diarrhea, parasitism. Such animals can be um, culled. Especially in farm condition, uh, it is better to you make use of the uh, culling routine and avoid overstocking. So we will be able to uh, do dose with another class of anthelminthic. Give um, to, to more than one anthelminthic. Two anthelminthic uh, together can be given. Give supportive treatment with the vitamin B complex, iron, probiotics, protein supplements. Identify and remove the source of infection and. Uh, Overstocking need to avoid it. Recommendations to prevent the development of anti-helminthic resistance. Our prime obligation is to prevent the development of anti-helminthic resistance is the correct dose of anti For that, uh, we have to be thorough with the dose, correct dose. In, in uh, correct dose, there is one more thing is there, the uh, weight of the animal it is uh, per kilogram body weight. In many cases, uh, there will be just uh, in uh, many of the, uh, when we conducted an awareness survey, farmers are not at all bothered about the dose of the antelope. They will be giving slight less dose. They will be thinking that this uh, do, uh, are creating some problems if it is above the dose. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, the being of the animal, uh, they are least bothered. There are some uh, formulas for detecting the weight of the animal uh, in the field conditions also. So that they, they, uh, we can talk them with that formula and uh, assess the correct weight. And also um, in, a, if in, in a farm, if there are 100, say the 100 animals are there, we can divide them, uh, them into 20, 20 group. And they one animal each, the heaviest animal from each group may be weight and uh, do, dose all the animals in that group based on the weight of that hideous animal. So it will be okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, minimize a repeated treatment with antelope. That's an increased frequency of treatment. Uh, if it is, uh, if you, I told you that uh, increased frequency if it is the, within the pre patent period, that uh, all the sur um, susceptible parasites will be uh, dying, and the only thing that is remaining will be the resistant population. So, low par level parasitism should be tolerated. We have to um, 
teach the farmers to um, maintain few animals with the parasite. We have to understand one thing that these parasites are also evolved along with the host. It is not possible to eradicate all the parasites. We have to coexist. We, have, we want to coexist. When it is becoming uh, a when the parasite is creating problems to the host, it is producing reduction in the production, it is um, it's a threat to its life, then we will be interfering. So some amount of parasite should be tolerated. They will be acting as a refugia population and uh, they will be helping to reduce the uh, complication of the chemical treatment of um, and um, this chemical treatment for the parasitism, that is the endelmatic resistance. So some amount of parasitism should be tolerated and uh, some animals should be left untreated, especially in case of under the healthy male animals, they can tolerate um, uh, to high degree. So we can maintain some animals in the farm um, with uh, uh, some amount of parasitism and avoid same class of under money for every year. Uh, for if you are uh, to um, control the parasitism or uh, to control the andermatic resistance, we should not change the group every month. We have to stick on to benzimidazole group for one, one year. Then we have to change over to another class of andermatic for the next year. Next year or uh, same class, avoid same class of andermatic for one year. Uh, you have to remember one uh, one thing that we have to we have, uh, the resistance is towards the mode of action. So you have to change the group of and uh, not with the albendazole and fenbendazole or, or oxybendazole. We have to change the group that is ivermectin, levamisole, uh, benzimidazole, <clears throat> and frequent moving and uh, optimum stocking density is also very important because by moving this larvae will be exposed to soil and when they uh, once they are exposed to the um, sun direct sunlight they will be dying they are optimum they will be so we can we make use of the natural dying of the larva population in the pasture and maintain proper the treatment and quarantine for 72 hours but, uh, when we are purchasing animal from outside uh, we have to treat these animals with Double the dose, three types of anthelmintic. There are three class of anthelmintic. Double the dose at two days interval, and after that, seventy-two hours we have to keep them in dry load, and then uh, leave the animal uh, along with the, our animals. So even if uh, any resistant parasite is there in the body of the animals that is purchased. To some extent, we will be able to kill them. Understand? The, so maintain, we have to proper anthelmintic treatment and quarantine for uh, 72 hours. We have to give two, uh, the double the dose of three class of anthelmintic, two days interval. So the six days. Then 72 hours, again 72 hours, uh, so that all the... Uh, X will be excreted out. Then only we can leave the uh, animal in the pasture or along with our animals. This is the quarantine. Then on farm practices that lead to the development. Then frequent deworming, especially without a clinical uh, need. We are getting uh, medicine uh, in a cheap cost or uh, free of cost from the veterinary hospital. You should not be. Uh, go for deworming your uh, animals unless it is uh, actually in need of animal or without any clinical need, even if it is not the climate, or we got uh, along with the kit, we got uh, um, deworming. So deworming all the animals, that is not a, uh, that should not be done. This is, the, the, the deworming should be done very carefully, extremely, it should be uh, stick on to the epidemiological, the timing is very important. Then under dosing. This under the, actually um, this uh, heterozygous, uh, the homozygous RR resistant group is there, a small R, uh, capital uh, R, that's a uh, heterozygous. This heterozygous, if it is resistant, 
uh, with the underdosing, this heterozygous will not be uh, eliminated. So this heterozygous uh, resistant parasite will be uh, transmitting the gene of uh, resistant to the next generation too. And uh, another thing is that injection of anthelmintic rather than oral treatment. There are, nowadays, there are many uh, anthelmintics are there, oral um, injection, injectable, for uh, Compared to the other mode of uh, application, oral treatment is the best. And that to bolus is the best. And we have to give uh, to the uh, tip of the, uh, at the uh, close to uh, the throat on the top of the, um, tap. And uh, the proper administration of the trenches and calibration is very important. And we also, we have to think that uh, we have to fast the, for the better and best uh, absorption of the antimodic. We have to fast the animals for uh, 12 to 24 hours. Strictly speaking, 16 hours fasting, then we can give and another 12 hours after that, total 24 hours, 16 hours plus uh, 12 hours, uh, 28 hours, or, or, the, or uh, 16 hours uh, plus 8 hours. We can give water, but uh, this um, concentrate and uh, should be avoided, concentrate uh, as well as the uh, grass may be avoided uh, because that uh, if we are um, giving the antibiotic to the animal, this if, if it's having full uh, stomach, along with that uh, uh, material in the rumen, it will be moving. Then it, without any absorption, it will be excreted out. So to prevent that, we have to for the better absorption, we have to fast the animal. This can be done uh, only in adult animals. You know, in case of pregnant animals. So, uh, and use of dewormer with the persistent activity should be avoided. Because uh, an dewormer with persistent activity in the initial phase, enough um, dewormer will be coming out. And later on, that will lead to underdosing and, uh, and itself will lead to the development of anti helminthic resistance. The introduction of resistant worms into a farm by a new animals. For that, we have to follow the quarantine procedures. And on farm practices that lead to the development, the treatment given when intensity or uh, when we have to give the treatment when the intensity of feeding stages in the uh, pasture is low and majority occur in the host. Uh, if it is, uh, if we are giving. Um, Treatment, the pastor having very less amount of parasite, then and the majority is in the host, that itself will be all the parasite in the host will be dying. The, the rest uh, um, that is with the, uh, surviving is the resistant parasite. So the treatment given when the intensity of feeding stages in the past is slow and majority occur in the host is um, lead to the development of anthelmintic resistance. High genetic diversity coupled with a large population size increases the chance of survival of resistant allele. That, that, that is why this resistance is very high in case of our um, humongous counterparts. It's having a high, it's a very prolific uh, population size, increased chance of occurrence of the resistant allele high frequency. The increased resistant allele population and dispersal with the current treatment. If you are currently treating, the resistant allele population will increase and disperse with the, and they will be dispersing. And that will lead to the um, high resistant population in that uh, pasture as well as in the bone of the host. And uh, the rate of development of that, so uh, altogether, if this anthelmintic resistance have genetic factors, biological factors, environmental factors, and operational factors. Now, how to overcome this anti-helminthic resistance? Uh, now, the methodology is the targeted uh, selective treatment. That is, uh, we have to identify the animals which are in need of treatment or that is uh, benefited, which are, uh, which are in uh, need of treatment 
uh, which are mostly benefited high producing animals um, this high pro high production and susceptibility to parasitism are linked so high producing animals we have to be with and avoid whole flock treatment so it's a refugia based strategy where uh, whole flock treatment should be avoided and this will lead to the slow down the development of anthelmintic resistance and we can identify the resistant animals also identification of the resistant animals are also possible by the targeted selective treatment for the targeted selective treatment how we will be able to identify the animals for that we need uh, this c tst uh, indicators one of the well known uh, example of this uh, indicator is famacha that is a farm melon chart developed by a veterinary surgeon uh, together with uh, with a, a few scientists in the onderpur veterinary um, college south africa farm melon chart farm melon is a veterinary surgeon and uh, in his idea only they developed the chart it was developed for the sheep i think uh, all of you are uh, aware of that farm melon chart later on it was validated in many of the america australia many of the small ruminant developing countries they have validated uh, <coughs> and they are regularly using it and uh, but one thing is that based on the chart uh, in avikanagar uh, uh, swarankar and sing to sign this over the from the la, from 2000 uh, 97 onward they are continuously working in small ruminants they have also developed a that a new uh, i color chart uh, and the icia has developed one uh, chart for goats in uh, mathu and uh, tanuas also have tried uh, to develop a uh, anemia chart and uh, in kerala as a part of my phd work we have also tried to develop an anemia i color chart and uh, <coughs> and uh, it was a visual appraisal of the conjunctiva of the uh, state the conjunctiva and uh, we have developed and correlated it with the fecal account as well as the DPRC. That is the correlation of the volume of parcel and the fecal account. And the FEC was carried out fecal, um, but using McMaster uh, modified McMaster uh, method. And we have validated based using the DPC DPRC as the golden standard as well as uh, FEC as the gold standard. For that, uh, first we have uh, taken the So in uh, around thousand eight hundred to eight um, hundred animals, adult animals uh, in various uh, physiological stage, we have um, taken the photograph of the conjunctiva uh, in the uh, sunlight using a macro lens, taken the fecal sample, taken the, uh, the blood sample, and also checked whether the animal is having fever. There is any tick population, heavy tick population, and blood smear is taken. In few animals we have uh, inspected the blood, uh, and uh, if animal is having fever or heavily tick populated, the <coughs> or any so uh, this is associated with the ice. We have uh, excluded the animal, and based on that, the DPRC we have correlated it with the color of the conjunctiva and the uh, lower uh, lower conjunctiva and the DPRC and the FCC, and we have developed an anemia icona chart. for uh, the malabari and attapadi goats of kerala with that uh, they can very well utilize uh, keeping them uh, to the conjunctiva for uh, one or two minutes um, in the day uh, sunlight uh, the, and compare it with the color of the conjunctiva if it is uh, one two three uh, in the one and two there is no need of any deboning three they can wait for another 20 15 days and uh, during this 15 days they can uh, feed the animal properly and in the four and five they have to be born the animal immediately it's a protocol so anemia i color chart what is the benefits it's an index of a hemocosis actually uh, the hemocosis is a 
we have already seen that humongous uh, is associated with the severe anemia and uh, there is no uh, diarrhea in case of hemogosis and uh, there is no need of any hematocrit or FEC count uh, because we have already validated the, uh, it with the FEC as well as the hematocrit and it's having a heritability of 0.2 to 0.55 and uh, this anemia card could improve uh, the treatment efficacy. It is around 87.45 percentage sensitivity and 82 percent specificity is there. With the effective utilization of this anemia card, we can reduce the anthelmintic UC by 73 percentage. And, uh, uh, and subsequently, we can reduce the anti helminthic resistance. Yeah. Where do any, uh, this anemia I card fail? There is every chance for me. We have to train the farmers properly. In, uh, we have in uh, Rajasthan also, they are training the farmers and then only they will be allowed to make use of the anemia. In Famacha chart also, they have to go through a video and get it uh, answer to the questions and then only they have to, uh, they will be able to make use of that card properly. So we have to train the farmers to make use of the card properly. And uh, this card will work only when the predominant strong is humongous. Humongous, only humongous it will work. And if it is uh, in an area with the severe anti helminthic resistance, it will not work. Misinterpretation of anemia and wrong diagnosis can also lead to the failure of the anemia card. Now we will come to the uh, I told you that there are many species of uh, strongulus are there. Uh, Hemongus is there, the trichostrongulus is there, esophagostromum is there, so many. So if you are developing a treatment strategy for a state, you have to think of all this. Uh, this uh, chronic, um, and in, other than anemia, there are many uh, factors, uh, many parasites can lead to many other uh, clinical symptoms. Then, uh, body condition scores, a protection trait, and a good TST indicator, and a direct measure of the changes in the muscle and fat. So the optimum uh, use of uh, body condition score is a, is a predictor of fat and uh, fatness and eve survival. And uh, it's indicated to reduce, even when we are using this body condition score uh, as a a TST indicator, it also could reduce the uh, anthelmintic usage very uh, correctly. And it's a good indicator of frog productivity and optimum profitability and most appropriate you know, to live weight measurement for assessing the health status of the animal. So actually the optimization of the host nutrition uh, was reported to, uh, to be an easier method uh, to improve the host resistance and resilience. Optimization of the host uh, nutrition is an easier method to improve the host resistance and resilience and the host immune response is very much related to the um, nutrition status and is closely linked to the um, uh, proper development and functioning of the immune system proper development and their functioning of the immune system, uh, the host immune response and the nutritional status are closely linked to each other. And the protein and energy are indispensable uh, for the synthesis of the proteinaceous immune mediators and uh, restoration of the damaged tissue. Restoration of the damaged tissue and the so it is a, um, if uh, the body condition score is, uh, thus the body condition score is an appropriate alternative to live weight measurement. If you are taking the live weight, uh, there are many, uh, many things, um, the, the internal organs uh, will also be included in that. But if you are you're using the body condition score, the body condition score is um, assessed you are as per the guidelines of the Langston University. And if it is taken as uh, there are may, uh, many body condition score uh, can be classified, uh, we should be shown that uh, body condition score, uh, lumbar, uh, um, it can be assessed by it's a touch and feel of the muscle and fat in the lumbar region as well as lumbar region 
as well as the sternal region. The more fat uh, accumulate in the sternum in case of bones, as well uh, compared to that in the lumbar. So we can assess it by the touch and feel in the lumbar region. It needs very little of the technical expertise. So uh, BCS less than, uh, there, are, there are many BCS categories are there that we will, I, I will be telling. In case of BCS1, the emaciated with a highly visible backbone. See, the very visible backbone. Continuous uh, ridge with the hole of flank. Easy penetration of the fingers into the intercostal space. Prominent spinal process prominent spinal process with the sawtooth appearance, grasp easily with the thumb and the forefinger. We can grasp easily with the thumb and the forefinger. And very little muscle between the skin and the bone. Between the skin and the bone, very little muscle will be there. And the transverse process of the lumbar vertebrae can be easily grasped. And the easy grasping of the sternal fat between the thumb and fingers and moving it from side to side. We are holding, holding the sternal fat between the thumb and finger and it can be moved from side to side. That is a uh, BCS1. Then BCS2, the backbone visible as a continuous. Here also the backbone is visible as a continuous ridge. Easy penetration of fingers into the intercostal space, easy grasping of the spinous process and lumbar vertebrae, no observance of the outline of the transverse process, palpation of the muscle mass during the skin and the bone, and that of the sternal fat with the finger, four fingers and thumb. In case of uh, lumbar three, Inconspicuous backbone. Backbone is inconspicuous. Penetration of fingers into the intercostal space by pressure only. Fail to gas the spinous process of the lumbar vertebrae. A wide, thick sternal fat with a limited movement. Wide and thick sternal fat with a limited movement. In case of lumbar four, <coughs> obscure backbone and sides are sleek. Continuous line of uh, spinous process, failure to hold the sternal fat due to the width and breadth depth. And uh, the lump BCS4 5 is not available in Kerala condition. So uh, this is the uh, this is a very simple technique which you can uh, learn by um, slight practice, and uh, we will see how. The distribution of the sternal fat, um, uh, the BCS sternum, which is more sensitive, the BCS sternum is uh, having highly um, correlated with the, um, I correlated this uh, BCS sternum and BCS lumbar and BCS average. Uh, in that BCS sternum, more for correlation was very high. So uh, the, the population, in our uh, state, the population will be like this. The, the BCS uh, this is 1, 2, 1, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and 4. This is the distribution, frequency distribution of the BCS among the God population in Canada. The, this is a correlation of BCS with the FEC. This is, uh, and this I am showing as um, to inform you that there is a association between, uh, between fecal account See the uh, fecal account when the fecal account is increasing, the BCS is decreasing. That, that, there is a negative correlation with the fecal account at the body condition score. Then there is a negative scoring the anemia. When the anemia score increases, the body condition score decreases. The DPRC also will be that. If the if the uh, BCS is high then PPRC also will be fine. So we can use uh, this uh, body condition score as uh, along with the uh, anemia score, uh, along with the uh, humongous intensity, it, it shows the intensity of humongous and also the intensity of the trichostrongulus or any other parasitic infection. So BCS is very, very good 
TST indicator. Uh, nowadays in Australia, they are just uh, looking into the BCS. They are, uh, so we can inform the farm, teach the farmers to maintain the animals in a high body condition score so that uh, the, the animal will the escape from parasitism by themselves. So association between the body condition score and fecal account. When the body condition score is one, the fecal account is high. See the body condition score increasing, the fecal account decreases. So uh, this indicates that if, he, if the body condition score is maintained high, the, the parasitism will be naturally very less. So uh, then another, another methodology, it's a DAX score. Diarrhea, that is also a very uh, less invasive methodology, uh, which is very well utilized in case of sheep, but in uh, case of goat, it is very less. The, it, it, the diarrhea score is zero, is very high. Diarrhea score in a population, the diarrhea score is very less, so we cannot use it very freely uh, because uh, the diarrhea score is very, uh, usually the diarrhea is very less in, in goats compared to that in the sheep. Then, but uh, to some extent, the knowledge of the diarrhea score in sheep can be made, you made use of in goat as it is an invasive methodology. So association of FPC with the DAX score. When the DAX score, uh, we have developed a DAX score like this, then the, uh, there is no DAX zero, DAX around the uh, tail, it is one. If it is uh, slightly down uh, the DAX, it is um, two and it is up to the fretlock, uh, it is three. So uh, the DAX score two uh, is just positive. Mm -hmm. So we correlate it with the DAX score. Uh, when the DAX score increases, fecal account also increases. Association of DAX score with the fecal account. <coughs> so combining all this, we have developed a treatment strategy that is, if, the, if we check the animals, if it is, uh, first we will uh, see whether uh, the animal is having, uh, any, we, we develop a new treatment strategy uh, for the animals in Kerala, uh, combining that anemia score, body condition score, and DAG score, and correlated it with the, um, and then as a check factor, uh, we have taken the FPC. So uh, that's a combined targeted selective treatment. First, we will see whether it is having uh, anemia or not. Then we will check for the uh, see, uh, in the, uh, um, body condition score, then DAG score, and then we will check the <coughs> uh, fecal account also. So uh, that is a combined targeted selective treatment strategy. And compared with the routine treatment and strategic prophylactic treatment. In routine treatment, every two months, uh, in Kerala, many in many locations, the, they are uh, regularly treating uh, in every two months. That's a routine treatment. In strategic prophylactic treatment, uh, before and after the rainy season, they used to treat. So that's a strategy prophylactic treatment. And uh, we compared it with the fecal account, FPCRT. We uh, checked the anti helminthic resistance by FPCRT, then anti use and uh, resistance. Polyficacy, weight gain, mortality. That's also important. We are reducing, uh, if you want to, uh, uh, telling that we want to reduce the usage of the anthelmetic and resistance. Uh, if we are not giving anthelmetic, if the animal is uh, rearing is becoming um, <coughs> loss, there is no uh, uh, weight gain. Uh, with the, Weight gain is if it is affecting, if it is causing mortality, then if it is causing, uh, ready, causing, uh, causing reduction, the polyficacy that we cannot use. So we checked uh, fecal account, FECRT, anthelmetic use, polyficacy, weight gain, and mortality. In polyficacy, weight gain, and mortality, there was no problem. And uh, there was no, uh, it was almost, um, uh, it, it was just similar to that in case of the uh, routine treatment and strategy prophylactic treatment. In case of FEC, see, uh, this yellow color uh, lines indicate the yeah, CTST group, uh, then even if it is higher, in all the cases it is high compared to that in case of the uh, routine treatment and strategy prophylactic treatment, but with the effective utilization of the uh, combined targeted uh, uh, selective treatment indicators like anemia score, 
body condition score and diet score we were able to reduce the fecal account let's see uh, with that uh, uh, we, we were able in the initial phases and at the end it's also similar to that in case of the um, uh, routine treatment and strategy for selective treatment that indicates that but uh, there will be remarkable reduction in the uh, remarkable reduction in the usage that is body con uh, from that it is clear that improved body condition about to contribute to improvement in the host response that is if you are able to improve the body condition score about to it will improve the host response and it will escape from parasitism it is important so bcs is an indicator of host response and leaving behind animals untreated will maintain the refugia and uh, that will uh, reduce the anti helminthic resistance and anti helminthic treatment should coincide with the ectodysis and survival of the larval population in the environment so uh, we were able uh, compared to that in case of the uh, the, the, the routine treatment and strategy prophylactic treatment one by third of the anthelmintic was needed to maintain the animal during this period of one year it's a period of one year study where uh, we can reduce the usage of the anthelmintic by one by three so that's uh, that is uh, remarkable as um, uh, the government as well as the farmers are spending too much money for the um, Um, purchase of anthel medi if it is uh, going to be a base that is a national base <coughs> so the, the effective utilization of the targeted selective treatment it was uh, able to reduce the usage of the anthel medi by 73 percentage mm, and uh, one by third anthel medi uh, usage could be reduced by one by third of the uh, that used in case of uh, routine treatment and strategy for that trick then a uh, nutrition actually i told you that uh, this uh, anthel medic um, are anti helminthic um, and you know, not, the parasitism is a nutritional disease actually we are forcing the animal uh, to stand in a particular location and graze in that location only Yeah. actually this goat they are brown. they used to browse from uh, shrubs and trees but from there they will not be getting the um, larvae but we are forcing them to take uh, graze from a um, particular location and uh, we, we are feeding them and they, uh, our uh, their nutrition is under our control and uh, that's why uh, the parasitism is getting uh, more and more then protein supplementation reduces the we can reduce the chemotherapy by uh, protein supplementation then uh, the flushing that is improving the uh, that you know, protein nutrition uh, in, in case of pregnant animals that itself will reduce their fecal account then micronutrients that is also very important that's cobalt molybdenum uh, copper selenium they have their role in the resistance and resilience so a multi um, vitamin mineral supplements are very essential for the uh, sustainable manage of parasitism with a limited chemotherapy and effect of post weaning nutrition you know that we have already seen that we have to early weaning is very important post weaning we can control the nutrition and and where um, that that will be uh, the animal will put on the weight and there will be reduction in the fecal account in influence of urea molasses blocks on fcc and uh, growth bypass protein can improve the health status and they do the resistance and resilience to the parasitism and another set of uh, things is a bioactive forages that is a content tannin the secondary metabolites they will be <coughs> reducing the fcc by 60 percentage uh, these are the some of the you know, plants with the condensed tannin in kerala they are jackfruit leaf sapota kaini subabul penga pera rea uh, this uh, this uh, goats they will they are craving for this um, jackfruit leaf because they contain tannin uh, this tannin will help them to escape from the parasitism <clears throat> so uh, that, that is very important and this condensed tannin it's actually it will reduce the fcc 
they will be eliminating the adult parasite, lower the mucosal uh, penetration and inhibit the egg hatching. Egg hatching will be interfered, affect the worm nutrition. And the uh, worm nutrition will be less and reduce the worm movement. And they will be, uh, they, they, uh, this content standing will increase the uh, protein <coughs> nutrition and the health of the animal will be improved and uh, inhibit the excretion of the uh, larvae and the, the mucosal penetration will be hindered, inhibit the egg hatching will be affected. All this way they will be condensed and uh, will act. Another uh, thing is the copper oxide biopartigate. Copper oxide, bio, no, not co the copper oxide biopartigate uh, at 50 milli, 58 milligram per kilogram only. Uh, if it is given, that will be changing the pH, the condition, the abnormal, and uh, help the animal from escape from the effect of humongous. Mm, and uh, we have to give more once or twice a year uh, this uh, copper oxide where particle instead of copper oxide, we should not give copper sulfate that, that, that will cause uh, copper poisoning. Uh, and that's uh, the sheep is highly susceptible to copper poisoning. So, copper, um, co copper sure, that's a product. Copper sure there are uh, for kids uh, two gram is available for adult four gram is available and cattle also the products are available. Then we will come to the herbal dewormers. Herbal dewormers, uh, you know, this um, chili, then uh, green onion, coconut, then garlic, then papaya, um, pomegranate, or the pumpkin seeds. All these have contents. I mean, there are many researchers are going to know the world on this herbal dewormers. But one, uh, they all can uh, act like this, but we cannot um, replace our commercial dewormers. <clears throat> we, we cannot replace our commercial dewormers with these things. But uh, they can be uh, complement the commercial dewormers. They can also be given to improve the effect of the, uh, improve the health status. We can do the management of the flock, disrupt the free living stages, delay the egg hatching, the larval development. All this can be done with this uh, herbal dewormers. Um, so uh, within a few years, we will have this la papaya latex. That's also a very good um, herbal dewormer. So many researchers are going on throughout the world for the um, development of the herbal dewormers. Uh, then management practices that can reduce the need for DVD. Uh, the nutritional management practices. We have to manage the pastures so that plants are available in the vegetative stage so that the animal will have enough <coughs> stage for the uh, grazing. Uh, the managed pastures so that plants are available in the vegetative stage that will be uh, more nourishing for the animal and plant annuals, legumes, and balm seeds are plants to improve the nutrition of the host. Whenever the nutrition, uh, the pasture is poor, we have to supplement um, with the high, uh, good quality and quantity. The uh, supplement should be given and good protein, a protein diet is going, uh, should be given in the late gestation to reduce the fecal account and uh, empower the farmers to maintain the Good, uh, them in a good body conditions or uh, preferably about to so that the animal will escape from the parasitism by themselves. Then how we can uh, think of the pasture man, principles of pasture management. Actually in Kerala we don't have any very good pasture. In, in many of the North Indian states I think they have good pastures and then uh, there we can reduce the larval density. We can reduce the larval density. Utilize natural death rate. We can moving, a frequent moving, uh, they, the, uh, can uh, lead to the natural uh, death rate of the, uh, by exposing them to the direct sunlight. When there is large amount of larvae is there in the pasture, uh, not allow the animal to, um, for grazing and accelerate the larval mortality. So if you have uh, one acre land is there, first uh, three days uh, in, a locale, in a particular area, then after that next uh, area, then continuously uh, they, they can, uh, the, only after one month, they are allowed to base in that first portion. So 
uh, by the time all the lava will be uh, killed by the uh, direct sunlight itself. Even if we are not going, uh, they will be dying by themselves. So uh, we can, uh, if you are working in a uh, goat farm or sheep farm, maybe we can use the larval uh, such things. Uh, first for the first ten days, you uh, use uh, this ten cents. Then next ten days, another ten cents. Then by the time they come back to that uh, initial ten cents, all the larvae in that area will be dying by themselves. So we can, uh, without uh, much andermandi, we can make use of the natural death rate of the larvae, you accelerate the larval mortality by the direct sunlight, and never graze pasture below two inch height. Whenever there is pasture is very less, avoid such grazing because at that height there is every chance for the presence of larvae to be there, and wet pastures are also <clears throat> because of, uh, during the the, the moisture is very essential for the uh, survival of the, uh, the larvae and a rotational grazing can uh, should be practiced. Practice multi-species grazing that itself will uh, reduce the intensity of parasitism. The uh, parasite that is affecting cattle will not be affecting the goats or parasite that is affecting the sheep will not be affecting the cattle. <coughs> Avoid deworming in extreme climate. Extreme climate deworming uh, will lead to anthelmintic persistence. Prevent overgrazing. Do not use drug with persistent activity. Never overstock. Stock frequent treatment. Then uh, the last methodology is a genetic control of parasitism that we have. To, uh, we will be opting in another. A uh, few years. That is the epidemiological advantage is there. Uh, can, we can reduce the number of animals that require deworming. There are uh, resistant and resilient animals are there. Resistant means they will not uh, allow the parasite to develop in their body. Resilient animals, their uh, parasite will develop, but their health status will not change. Their PPRC will not be rising. Their fecal account will not be rising. Parasite will be there. But their uh, clinical, there will not be any clinical symptoms. So um, they are resistant and resilient. Economically, sense they are very important because there is no deworming. Reduce the anthelmintic persistence, <clears throat> traceability, welfare issues. All these are uh, can be connected to the genetic control. So in uh, in near future, uh, we are uh, trying. We we all together will uh, find out few animals which are resistant. In uh, Avikanagar, they have already identified sheep which are resistant to the uh, parasitism. That is ultimate. It's the ultimate sustainable parasite control strategy. And uh, we can uh, simply uh, select, uh, selective breeding can be done based on the FEC, PRC, total protein, serum pepsinogen, body condition score. All these can be used for the uh, selection of animal, well, especially for uh, using the simply, uh, in simple sentence, uh, by morphological confirmation, we are using many factors. A FEC can also be used by selecting a buck for <coughs> breeding and polygenic trait. And actually, this anti-parasite resistance is a moderately heritable trait, which is a um, that's 20 to 40 percentage. And parasite uh, resistance is a moderately heritable trait um, and the polygenic trait also. The next is the biological control. That is, uh, there are many virus, bacteria, fungi, earthworms, microarthropods are there, uh, which can kill or the, uh, which can be effectively utilized for the um, killing of this um, parasites. One thing is that. Nematophagus fungi. There are many types of nematotrapping fungi are there, endoparasitic fungi are there, egg parasitic fungi are also there. One is Arthrobotrys oligospor. This, uh, when this, uh, uh, there are many researches are going on throughout the world, and uh, when the parasites, uh, when these, uh, this, um, um, 
limited fabulous fungi can be incorporated into the uh, into a feed blocks and they can be fed to the animal and without any digestion or any problem they will be excreted in the fecal material and they will be there in the cowpacks of the fecal material of the uh, uh, sheep or goat and whenever the larva is developing they will be killed actually while fecal uh, examining the fecal material also we have we are, we are also coming across many of this uh, fungi and uh, so this nematode fungus fungi is developed in our place we can identify this and we are making use of this for the uh, and uh, th that it itself will reduce the <coughs> parasitism in the uh, pasture uh, pasture larval burden can be a remarkably reduced by the utilization of this nematophagus fungi. <coughs> now come anti-parasitic vaccines. Uh, we can uh, the, against the barber's pole bone, there's a, there's a vaccine called this barber vax. It was de uh, developed by the modern university <coughs> veterinary institute. They will be suppressing the uh, egg production. There will be clean pasture will be there. It's a single product. It will be it is environmentally friendly and no withholding period will be there. And uh, uh, there will be a first barber box can be given the lab, uh, and the lab marking. Then uh, two to three, uh, three to four weeks later, then another three to four weeks later, then another one in six weeks, then fifth barber vaccine, six weeks after the fourth vaccination, then uh, the sixth one may be required six weeks after the fifth vaccination. This is uh, in uh, Australia, they are uh, using this. <clears throat> and uh, single approaches are often unsustainable. Actually, what uh, is the message behind this? We have to follow integrated approaches are needed. And the exact terminology for utilizing the anthel is optimum usage. I am not telling that we cannot use anthel We have to use anthel But think that we have to um, optimum use of the anthel is essential. Future, we have to periodical epidemiological survey should be conducted in each and every uh, uh, region. And the uh, anthelmintic resistance should be detected. Uh, FTCRT can be very well utilized. There is no need of any molecular methods. Simple technique is FTCRT and development of a combined targeted selective treatment strategy for each and every stage. Exploration of the possibility of breeding for parasite resistance in small dominates. This, these are the uh, future prospects. And uh, philosophy of one century is a common sense of the next. Actually, these dewormers uh, were developed in the last uh, 40 to 50 years back. We have developed uh, so many, uh, we have um, reached, uh, we have acquired a lot uh, by the effective utilization of this. And in the next century, uh, what uh, will be happening? We cannot now predict that the philosophy of one century is the common sense of the next. So effective utilization uh, will become a routine practice in the uh, coming days. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your excellent presentation. You can see the chat box is full of the compliment for the presentation. Uh, now I will uh, request uh, Dr. Naresh Kulkarni to take question and answer session. How frequently deworming should be done in small domains in adjoining areas of metropolitan cities? In metropolitan cities, the problem is uh, one, there are many, many parasites are involved in this, uh, this thing. Actually, this uh, strong, uh, with regard to strong gale parasites, it is associated with the uh, Rain only. Rain is in, uh, the climate, relative humidity, uh, temperature, and rainfall are the major reason uh, uh, for the development of the larvae. And associated with rain only, we have to uh, you, uh, to deworm the animals. But uh, in case of this um, nearby the metropolitan cities, the um, dog population will be high. So uh, this uh, tapeworm infections from dogs will uh, be causing some problems in case of 
uh, sheep and goat, uh, uh, those that uh, grazing in that area, they will be causing some problems. Uh, So in any areas, there is no need of uh, monthly deworming, twice monthly deworming. Uh, actually, you have in which area it is a, 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 what is the climate of that region, and you have to based on the climate only uh, we have to uh, design the deworming um, of that region. Okay, ma'am. Uh, why ma human causes infections more in sheep as compared to goats? Uh, the sheep, they, they are grazed close to the ground. That's why they will be uh, getting the infection. But compared to that uh, sheep, the immune status of the goats is um, less. So they are also you know, uh, they, uh, they are also getting the infection. But uh, the sheep, they used to graze close to the ground. So they, they get this uh, ground feeding infections. Uh, they will be getting the infection more commonly. In the regular fecal sample examination. Regular fecal sample examination under the current uh, staff uh, position in a veterinary dispensary is not practical. Because if we have a, um, a person who is engaged, in, 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 whom we can engage for fecal sample examination or uh, laboratory examination only, then you can do the uh, uh, examination, but it is not possible to do the fecal sample examination regularly for all the animals and do the work in a hospital um, regularly. So uh, that is why we are we are developing this uh, anemia score, body condition score, such strategies um, with uh, wherein we are correlating these strategies with the fecal sample so that you can make use of that uh, card or the body condition score directly. <clears throat> what should be done to prevent excessive use of dewormer in star fed pork farming to break the bone chain? <coughs> excessive use of dewormer in star fed animals, uh, you can uh, very well uh, reduce the usage of the um, dewormer where you just um, keep the, uh, the grass after cutting un under di direct sunlight for a few hours, all the larvae will be dying by themselves and then there is no need, uh, need of, uh, uh, you can reduce the deworm. And in, in completely stalked, the number of uh, stalking uh, should be managed. Uh, the area, uh, and the, the management should be correct to break the chain. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. Uh, there are a few uh, number of questions. Uh, kindly uh, elaborate pasture management in anthelmintic crystal area. Uh, pasture management, I have uh, pasture management in Andalmadic resistant area, pasture management, uh, one thing, frequent mowing. Then uh, in a particular area, go for uh, three days. The next is, uh, uh, area, next area. So that by the time you come back to that area, all the larvae will be dying by themselves. Early morning and late evening, deworm, uh, grazing should be avoided and improve the nutrition. Um, whenever the pasture is uh, poor in their um, quality and quantity, supplement it uh, with the protein nutrition. So that maintain, uh, uh, advise the farmers to maintain uh, their uh, health status or the um, body condition score above 1.5 so that they escape from parasites and make them safe. How can we minimize AR by pasture management? We can re reduce the um, the size of the, uh, the pasture, uh, the, the, um, if the direct sunlight is falling to that uh, pasture and enough uh, space is there, that itself uh, will kill the, many of the larvae. The size of the uh, grass is also important. Um, make use of um, uh, plants which are more than uh, or five, more than five centimeter. Uh, so the larvae will not come after. Um, five centimeter or up to 50, uh, 50 above 15 centimeter, then a larvae will not be coming. So, in uh, such area, you, you plant such uh, 
grass. Bromo couldn't have any anti-prolactic activity. So we can, no, that is not needed. Give uh, good nutrition instead of bromocryptin. Uh, this bromocryptin is given for treatment of infertility. Is anemia card available commercially? Uh, we have uh, just uh, um, making it available within a month. Uh, this was the question which has been asked by so many field veterinarians that, you know, they, can we have this uh, anemia card commercially available? Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we, the, we, uh, two names only, but there were uh, so many questions. Uh, the same question with the different name. Yes, there. And the, the last question that how flushing is being done to reduce the fecal egg count. Improve the, uh, how flushing is being done to reduce, improve the protein nutrition, uh, improve the bypass protein, uh, then urea molasses in the feed so that uh, we can reduce the fecal egg count. Okay, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your excellent uh, speech on the uh, limited chemotherapy as well as there are the different uh, aspects which has definitely benefited the field veterinarian and uh, for this question answer session also. Ma thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm also thankful to the Olympic uh, uh, family for giving me an opportunity to present a part of my PhD work in front of the uh, field veterinarians. Actually, they are the end users for uh, such research findings. I'm very happy to uh, present it before them. So, thank you. Uh, I'm also thanking you. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Now, we'll, uh, I invite uh, Dr. Naresh to take both of thank you as well. Yes. Uh, a good evening to one and all. What a great evening it was, which we, uh, was been great evening was been done by Dr. Shamla K. Ma'am for sharing her practical experience on the management of helminthosis with limited chemotherapy. On behalf of Olympic Pharmaceutical, myself, Dr. Naresh Kulkarni, would like to thank Shamla K. Ma'am for sharing her all expertise uh, with all the field veterinarians across the country. Definitely, definitely ma'am, your expert views will benefit the numerous field veterinarians across the country. I thank all the field veterinarians who have shown their keen interest in this webinar. I would like to also thank Mr. P. Kurnanedi, sir, who is Senior Vice President of Olympic Pharmaceutical for, cost, uh, for his constant guidance, motivation, and encouragement to organize such a useful webinar for the benefit of field veterinarians. I would like to also thank uh, Dr. Santosh Shinde, sir, uh, Mr. Rajesh Kumar Sharma, sir, Dr. Sanjay Latkar, sir, Dr. Amit Singh, Dr. Gangadhar Thombe, and entire field force of Olympic for their wholehearted support to make this webinar successful. I would like to thank everyone who has directly and indirectly helped for the smooth conduction of this webinar. Thank you, one and all.